Okay, so welcome to this webinar with Laura Dobb. She she's runs a Facebook group and a blog called Slow Dog Movement, which people might want to look at um, after we've finished. And she's just opened an indoor enrichment centre in Cornwall. So she's about she's all about making things really natural and good for dogs. Is that a good um, introduction? I like that, Penny. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nick. That's how it came up in your. I don't know whether your not your name is. Oh, you haven't got your. You can put yourself on if you want to. I'm Kate. Kate. Yeah. It I came up as Nick. Yeah. Hi, Kate. Nick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. So, Laura, do you want to start? And then if anybody else wants to hop on, they can. That's good. I like having an audience of two. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? It's always good. Okay. Bless. Um, so I'm going to try not to say um too much. This is good Don't training. Don't worry. Doesn't yes. matter. All right. I'm sitting in my sitting room in Penzance, and it's a relatively sunny, sort of overcast day here, and uh, it's all calm in the household hopefully a few dogs around so you might hear barking uh i'm going to just introduce the slow dog movement at first and uh, that kind of started percolating in my brain in like 2013 2014 and it's only now this january that i started the facebook group uh um basically walking slow with your dog and and taking your time has and enjoying nature has existed for ever. I mean, you know, uh, Aboriginal peoples have been walking the earth and <laughs> we've all been going slow for a long time, but I think, uh, you know, like the other slow movements, because the world has gotten faster and faster and with technology, people have pointed to slowing down because it gives more value to life and we can enjoy what we do every moment. So whether we're eating or with our dogs. Yeah, that's sort of the slow eating movement has been a big thing, hasn't it? For sure, since the 80s. Yeah. Um, so I am talking about forest bathing with your dog today, and that also kind of started in the 80s and um, has very old historical roots in Japan. Um, but I'll get into that in a moment. I just wanted to talk about the slow dog movement because um, its purpose is really to shine a light on what's positive for dogs and um, and what's part of their natural ethogram. Um, some of your uh, listeners may have heard that word before, and that's just what um, sort of the, the, the little things that make up a dog's life in a natural way. Um, and there's been studies in India. One of our colleagues, Sindor um, Pangal, has done research on street dogs. And I mention that almost in every single blog post I do for the mm -hmm. slow dog, movement, just because it's such a good reference point. I mean, dogs basically rest and sleep half the day. And, you know, other part of the day, they mooch around and scavenge and um, so you're going to hear that a lot from different speakers, I'm sure, in the future. It's really important research and really helps us um, have a good relationship with our dogs if we pay attention to it and, and base our, uh, you know, dog's life around those activities, enrichment and slow walking. So uh, um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is this forest bathing. So forest bathing with your dog, I'm not gonna get into what it actually is right now, but I think the title is pretty self-evident. So if you know anything about the slow dog movement, uh, forest bathing with your dog is actually going a couple gears slower even. <laughs> what, do, uh, do you think it's a, quite a new thing? Mm, yes, I do actually. Uh, and, and I, will, I will touch on that. I'm sort of starting kind of generally and then going more into detail. Uh, but it's basically um, exploring nature through your senses with your dog. And uh, I had the idea to do forest bathing with your dog after I bought um, Shin Rin Yoko by Dr. King oh. Lee, this book. Oh, in 20 yes. I thought, oh, what a fantastic idea. I work with dogs. I've just bought this book. Let's do forest bathing with dogs. And I even told Turid Rugas, um, our teacher and the head of the Pet Dog Trainers of Europe, uh, 
about this and she thought it was a great idea and then it i just you know things other things happened uh and i didn't do anything about it and then lo and behold a woman uh named nadine mazola in 2019 wrote this book which is called first being with your dog so <laughs> oh great i hadn't seen that one you have a really good idea do it and don't tell anyone about it so yeah well Keep I'm bringing it, bring it now. I'm, some people might have heard about this already. Uh, so I then looked uh, while I was writing my blog post, which is going to come out either tonight or tomorrow morning. I've just about got it ready. I looked at um, studies on why people walk dogs. And the slow dog movement people, the people that are part of that, really have it going well. I mean, they are really into it, they are slowing down, they're doing enrichment, they're being really mindful of how their dog's responding in a natural environment, and they're doing loose leash walking, and they, most of them know about the French study on the lowered heart rate, and, um, excuse me, I'm just gonna take off my vest for a minute, hang on a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, a lot of people, the average person, and not that this is a bad thing at all, but they kind of, they take their dog for a walk for their dog's health. You know, they do the two walks a day. They sort of ascertain where their dog likes to go walking. And um, there was a big study in the North on, on this kind of thing. And, and people were interviewed and, and they, they do it because they want their dog to be able to experience dogginess. So that's like playing, cavorting, digging, you know, running, possibly chasing the game, you know, or, you know, squirrels and that kind of thing. And uh, there, there's basically nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, it's good that dogs get out, for sure. And But forest bathing uh, is more of an experience that's an intentional shared experience of nature. And um, I mean, people could do it in a group, but uh, I think that it's probably more beneficial to do it one-on-one -on -one or two mm -hmm. humans dog. And And where you do it is in some cases, um, I mean, you could put a little bit of the elements in it uh, in your slow dog walk, uh, but as I'll get into it, in, in Japan in any way, um, it, it's quite specific how it's done. And it doesn't have to be like that. I kind of have a checklist and if you can get a couple of the points on the checklist, then you're doing well. Mm. So, um, uh, so basically, forest bathing started in 1982. I am reading from notes because there's so it's much. It's Go ahead. Go. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and um, and and so in 1982, uh, there was a gentleman who was part of the. Uh, he was a forestry official actually in Japan, and his his name is Tomohide Akiyama, and he said he stated that the people of Japan were in need of of healing through nature. And it was also part of a campaign to save the forests. So as in we are really connected with our dogs and we care about their health and that we take them for a walk. Um, and that's sort of a sim symbiotic relationship. This is like a symbiotic relationship with, you know, the forest looks after us, so we look after the forest. And if you love something, then you look after it, hopefully. And so it was very successful. And by 2004, um, they they sent set up um, science centers all over um, their like forest therapy bases in Japan. So uh, there's 62 of them in Japan, actually. 62. And when you, 62, yeah. And they have. I mean, uh, Japan is one of the most forested countries in the world. You'd think maybe Canada. But, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 75% of the people live in cities. Yes. And I mean, there's going to be a huge increase in people all over the world living in cities because of economics. Um, that's why it's really important. I mean, there's statistics like 90% of people in the UK and America spend, um, sorry, not 90% of people, but people in the UK and America spend 90% of their time indoors yeah. in, house, in cars. That means dogs are too. Hmm. So it's really important. Um, so they have these for, uh, certified forest therapy bases in Japan. And um, I mean, in Japanese philosophy, nature is really important. They have this huge connection um, and it, it sort of, it has roots in the Shinto and Buddhist religion. And uh, they have a term called Shizen, um, which translates as nature or naturalist in Japanese. It's one of the seven principles of Zen aesthetics. And um, the idea behind it is that 
we're all connected to nature, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And the more closely something relates to nature, the more pleasing it is. Um, and he also, the, the, the author of um, Shinrin Yoko mm -hmm. says that uh, nature is not separate from mankind in Japanese culture. It's, it's part of us. And I mean, you don't have to, to think very hard that it's going to be the same for dogs. I mean, basically everything that's good about nature for humans, except for eating certain plants or in just, you know, because pine oil is really dangerous for dogs and that kind of thing, but everything else is going to be positive. So I'm going to read you off a bunch of um, benefits, health benefits um, later on in the talk. And you'll just basically know that everything's good for dogs too. Um, so, so the way that that is embodied in Japanese cultures is a little bit off the topic, but I just want to give an example of what Shizen is. So, so they, on the kimono, they'll have beautiful um, patterns of flowers. Mm -hmm. They'll have, um, you know, a handmade spoon out of wood is very Shizen. So it's, it's, it in, it's sort of embedded in all their cultures. In their houses, the, the soji screen doors let the sound of the breeze of the rustling of the bamboo through and so it's really beautiful i mean of course yeah. they live in tall buildings in tokyo and are mm. very technological as but well. i think that's what everybody thinks isn't it yeah. you just it's think of tokyo of yeah but i mean even in in tokyo and other big cities there they have uh beautiful parks and they're very uh, cognizant of people needing breaks to go and um be in the parks and and have window views in their um offices i mean i read a study that even seeing the color green is be beneficial for us it doesn't even have to be an actual plant so i mean dogs color um senses are different focusing on the prisms of yellow and blue which kirsty has talked about before but um it doesn't mean that i'm, I'm sure the green is good for all of our eyes mm -hmm. So, um, um, so the other concept, uh, and I think this is true for dogs as well, is biophilia, which is the concept that humans have a bio biological need to connect with nature. Uh, and I mean, I don't know if you've been noticing, but if you go into water stones or you even look at the almost every single guardian that I get or when I see other newspapers, or when I'm on Facebook, there's lots of articles that are coming up with the fact that being outdoors is really helpful for yeah. depression, you know, that yeah. digging in the soil is good. I mean, it's not new. There's books about um, the lives of trees, different birds. I mean, you, you could you could read all year long books on mm. nature right now. Uh, and so I, I did mention how many um, forest centers there are in, in Japan, but you may be surprised to know that there's 29 forest bathing guides in England, Scotland, and Wales, 11 in Ireland, and two in Northern Ireland. There's three um, Institute of Forest Therapy uh, Institutes uh, in England, Scotland, and Ireland, representing the three. And uh, so a, um, a guide, so, so this woman that wrote the book on forest bathing with your dog is a guide. She's a forest bathing guide in the States. And um, she does take people and their dogs on walks, um, forest oh, that's bathing. Cool. Yeah, it is really cool. So I've just applied to be a forest bathing guide and I got accepted. So I don't know when the nice. course is going to start. It depends on COVID, but um, mm. that's my plan. Um, so basically they help, they're like, they, it's not, it's not um, meditation. It's not, uh, you could call it mindfulness, but there is no label. It's basically, mm. I'll just read a little blurb. Mm, forest therapy walks are not hikes in the traditional sense. An entire walk is typically two to four hours in duration and often covers uh, no more than a quarter of a mile distance or 2.5 kilometers. In that short distance, most people experience contact with nature in a much deeper way mm -hmm. than they ever have prior to the walk. On forest therapy walks, people have a wide range of experiences, some of which they feel are significant, even profound. Guides are trained in the skills and perspectives needed to be supportive witnesses of these experiences. So they might just invite you uh, to see something they um and just sort of guide you to to have a beautiful experience and not get hung up on any dogma there's there's no like right or wrong you mm -hmm. can there's also um a, a point at which and for some dog walkers it may be better at the end or in the middle where you you find a sit spot and that's just this makes it much more accessible actually doesn't it to everybody exactly yeah it's mm -hmm. great there's no there's no you know guidebook mm. i mean there are books about it and it's amazing you could write about something so simple yeah it's 
a bit like the slow dog in that you undo all your learning. I mean, that, that's, I think, the hardest thing for people. I mean, <laughs> the, the, a, a really funny thing is that my husband and I were walking in um, our local little Bluebell Dell with our dogs really slowly, really, just doing the loop. And it could take us like 45 minutes to do a tiny yeah. little walk. And um, this man came flying through the woodland with his Springer Spaniel with a frisbee. And his dog was flying. And so was he. And, and his mm -hmm. dog came up to our dogs and he said, oh, usually she's really barky. And our dogs were just like in such slow oh. motion. <laughs> there, was no, there was no interaction like except to say hello and his springer spaniel didn't bark he was mm. almost like hummingbirds hummingbirds move so quickly that they can't actually see us mm. walking so he was like a hummingbird dog and the man just went through the other end of the woodland and i said to my husband i bet he didn't even realize he's in a woodland like <laughs> so it's kind of like you know undoing that I'm People don't them. see, they just don't see, they're so busy in their own brains, <laughs> they don't see what, don't see anything, do they? And so the other end of the spectrum would be that people might go into the forest and sit and do zazen or like do the, you know, meditation and be really dogmatic about it or just like, not rigid, but you know, just that's what I'm going to do. Instead, mm. it's kind of like, um... We went for a walk yesterday, a really slow walk, and we found some pine tips, which um, I know from Canada, at the end of the pine tree, you don't take the one from the top, otherwise you stunt the growth, but the new growth, and you also don't take all of them off the tree, otherwise the tree is not going to grow, but you can take a few off each tree, and there's not many pine trees in Cornwall that around my neighborhood, it's all deciduous trees, you know, not evergreens, but you can eat pine tips. So doing that um you know going into the woodland and then finding this lovely little spot under a tree that gives you a lovely view which i've done with my dog ted in the bluebell dell and it's high enough high enough up that i can see all the the slope of the woodland i can see who's coming i can look up into the canopy and um you know, see the fractals, that's another part of forest bathing is that fractals um, are these wonderful, uh, you may know about them, um, they're the design in nature, like of a snowflake and of a spiral of a shell and waves and it's sacred geometry actually, it's just, uh, and it's, they're designed um, to relax us, they just, that's how we fit with nature, those mm. things just naturally relax us. So. Uh, um, basically, when you go for a walk with your dad, with your dog, and the slow walk is a great start. Mm. If you're going to do forest bathing, it's to sort of tune into your dog and what your dog's inviting you to do. It sounds really hippie, but it it's not because when you're a kid, you do this naturally. Yeah. You know, if your dog goes into the stream and looks back at you. Mm. Go into the stream if you feel like it, you know, and take off your shoes. Because actually scientifically, the, the earth gives us a mm. uh, really low um, electromagnetic energy that's really positive and grounding. And that's why dogs, it's better for dogs to, to be in the woods because it's easier. Well, first of all, it's more low impact yeah. on the duff, you know, the fallen um, yes. leaves, the fallen needles, that's called duff. If you're Canadian from the West Coast, you know what duff means. Because <laughs> you don't want a lot of it around your house because it's a fire hazard. But mm. in the woodland, the forest, it's fine. So that soft feeling, the, you know. The like cushioned. Any... Yeah, cushioned. Yeah. That's right. So it's really good for dogs and, um, and for us. So if you feel like it, it's warmer, take your shoes off. Or wear leather-soled shoes so that the um, energy from the earth can go into your feet. And... Uh, If your dog is slowing down, then go with your dog. If your dog's, see where your dog's attention is and, and not just with your eyes, you know, you could listen as well and sniff the air. It's using all your senses, including your hands and your feet. So listening to bird song, um, seeing the sunlight reflected in water, all these things really, really help us. Um, 
and they, it's also really bonding with your dog, just like walking slowly with your dog is. It's just more of a um, intentional way to slow down in nature. And it and slow walking with your dog is fantastic. And 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 this is sort of just one step further in that both of you are having the same sort of experience, having the same health benefits. And because we're so connected to dogs, like emotionally, they know our fa they have they know our facial expressions, they absorb our stress. Mm. This is the way for us to both get healthy and that symbiotic relationship be even better. So it's good for both of us, not just a dog walk. <laughs> not that there's wrong anything wrong with dog walks. No. But, mm. uh, so people often in Japan um, do foraging. I mean, lots of people around the world do foraging. Um, in the forest therapy centers, there's actually cafes that serve forest foods. Wow. And in my blog, I've, I've got a link um, in my blog to uh, like a pine tree uh, influenced pasta. So it has Ooh. pine chips and pine nuts and that kind of thing. And that's the kind of um, food they serve. So, I mean, in the UK, a lot of, I mean, in Scotland, there's lots of uh, evergreen trees. And, the, and, you know, in, in England, there's more deciduous trees, um, mm. but there's still lots of foraging to be done. I would recommend that you know what you're doing and, you know, do research and don't just put stuff in your mouth if you don't know about it. And same with your dog. Um, know what's, you know, good and what's not good for your dog. I, I, that's not within the scope of this talk um, or even my blog. I mentioned a few things that are really dangerous for dogs, but um, it just, it you know, it is about tasting. I mean, mm. Turid Rugas talks about puppies exploring the Tasty. world with their mouth yeah i mean humans That's, do this thing don't, don't they when they're babies you know they yeah. put everything in their mouth everything yeah and dogs do the same thing well, how much do you learn really what you like and what you don't like hmm. and exactly the basically free without without us running around after them all the time yeah so i mean you know a feather weird feeling in your mouth but um but you know I think that's just how they know about the world and um, mm. the different textures on their tongue and their oh. skin, you know, on their fur, depending on how thick their coat is um, and their pads. Uh, it's really beautiful. I mean, if you're in the forest and you see, or the woodland and you see a stump with moss growing on it, it's lovely to just touch it. So that's the kind of thing that you might do when you're forest bathing is just touch the moss and maybe your dog will come over and, mm. you know, it's, and uh, this, woman Nadine Mazzola who wrote Forest Beating with Your Dog talks about um, letting your dog uh, sort of sense your intention like to to sort of be open that your dog is seeing where your attention is going so that you know you don't have to point and say hey mm -hmm. come over here and touch this moss but just kind of I mean they're pretty psychic anyway dogs mm -hmm. uh, so there, there's actual uh, uh, organic compounds in the forest and the woodlands that are really good for us. You might know about um, the soil microbes that we were talking about before when you're gardening or walking, they do sort of come up and, you know, into your being and they're actually really, really good for you. And uh, I mean, the smell of autumn leaves is lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, there's volatile organic compounds uh, in the air and specifically evergreen green trees have these things called aromatherapy phytonicides which is like the scent of fir the scent of cedar it's really quite specific in japanese culture they even make candles that are this um lovely white cedar um it reminds them of home i mean they have all these products they burn incense i mean those kind of things aren't good for dogs but if you're actually in a forest that has those yeah. trees it's going to be harmful yeah. it's going to be <laughs> yeah um so so the, the soil microbes are good for depression and overall health. Um, the fresh air has negative ions. Uh, and of course I talked about walking barefoot. And the other thing that really shocked me when I was doing my research is that uh, even if you just do an extended walk, um, say if you go to a center, it doesn't have to be a forest bathing center, but if you go somewhere where there's enough space to walk, and you spend a couple of days there, the actual benefits of that, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute, what the, what the scientific benefits are, but it lasts up to 30 days. So wow. you don't have 
No, I know. You don't have to do forest bathing every day. I mean, if you're lucky enough to do it, do it. If I was living in Canada on the little island where our home is, then yeah. um, I could because basically I walk out the door and there's woodland, you know, deciduous and evergreen trees. Mm. I mean, you could run for two hours on that island and still not get to the end sure. of it. It's not that big, but you know, so that's amazing, an amazing mm. opportunity. So if people can, they don't have to feel bad about not being able to do that. They can do it in a park. It's, it's a mindset, I think. And, mm. um, and they, can, they can take little bits of it and put it in their daily walk. Or they can do a big one once a week or a big one once a month. Just know that that is out there. It's very healing. And the, the actual scientific healing part of it is that um, they're called natural um, killer cells. And the natural, the NK cell activity goes up 50% after um, uh, that short, brief time, like a two day, two, sorry, two night, three day um, time in the forest. Mm. And what natural um, killer cells do are, I'm not a scientist, so um, they boost the immune system and they help um, fight bad cells. So, and some people in Japan, they're studying cancer research with these cells. So yeah. it's quite serious. It's not just fluff and stuff and being mm. in the tree, being a tree hugger and everything. So I, th um, I think this is what people think, you know, you like I put up the webinar and you can see people going, rolling their eyes, but it is so <laughs> beneficial which is why this stuff is so important. You know, even if, you know, the great thing is I'll record it and hopefully people will, will listen to it because what, I mean, especially now, right now, we mm. need this. Mm. You know, I, I was, my husband and I were talking to a farmer yesterday as we crossed his land, which was a, a right of way. There's all these right of ways, of course, to every church in mm. England. And that's why we have so many public right of ways. I say we, I'm like a, a blow in of 10 years, but I love it. And that's why I wanted to come back to this country because there's so much walking. Mm. And um, he just said that, I mean, he was lamenting about being a farmer and how he doesn't grow anything anymore. And that kind of thing is quite sad. And he said, you're basically, you know, this is a view and the view isn't making any money. And, but he did say that because of lockdown, he gets where he would have had like maybe eight people in a day walking yeah. in the morning he's having 150 people and the ramblers it's scary are like, but I, well he doesn't like it of course no i'm sure he doesn't the, it must be feel like he's being invaded yeah and the dog walkers don't always pick up mm. so that's just and that's why it's very hard for farmers to actually grow cr food crops because they're responsible they have to report uh, what was on the land and if there's poop and worm dewormer they can't yeah. sell the crops so it's so important that people don't they always pick up um mm. there's a there's a company just an aside there's an a comp company in cornwall called dicky bags and i post um their posts maybe i'll do that in the next couple of days on my lala human dog coach uh, facebook page but mm. um that wasn't just a plug <laughs> um plug away <laughs> the dicky bags are fantastic because you can they're totally smell proof and you mm. can put the mm poo in the poo bag in the bag and zip it up and go on the go on a trail and go for hours and you're not going to smell it and then you can dispose yeah. of it you don't have to hang it on a fence and forget about it or well, throw it in what they do. you know um or just leave the poo which is disgusting and bad for farm animals and farmers and everyone really what mm. who is it good for it's not good for anyone so that's mm. my little rant that's but fine. yeah more and more people are are um experiencing being outdoors and um a neighbor of mine just said that she saw a woodpecker and she's lived in this neighborhood for like 40 years she hasn't seen this woodpecker for 20 years wow so it, you know <laughs> it's really a beautiful thing i mean lockdown isn't great and none of us i'm sure are enjoying it and it's a very serious situation but the fact that nature is coming back and mm. people are getting out in it and maybe appreciating it more um, and dogs are seeing more of it. I, I think mm -hmm. that's a really, so, uh, I mean, in the States, there was a, for, um, a, a study done. It kind of is, it was done because something bad was happening. There's something called, uh, I'm just having to look at my notes, sorry, emerald ash borer disease. How would I ever remember that? Uh, so all these trees died. And lo and behold, people died in all the areas mm -hmm. because uh, the trees help prevent uh, cardiovascular and re respiratory diseases. 
having trees. <laughs> so trees help us stay alive. They yeah. help dogs stay alive. They help, you know, it sounds like I'm just talking about humans, but it's really well, it's for all of us, isn't it? You know, if it's not good yeah. for us, it's not going to be good for the dogs. And as we, exactly. you know, I think everybody, most everybody loves their dogs. I don't know even the people that help possibly we don't agree what, with what possibly they do, but you know, we all love our dogs. I, th I think that um, a lot of people that, I mean, there are misguided people, people that think they need to exercise dogs tons and like throw balls and keep them fit. And that's, that is the sort of, I think, wrong thinking about dogs, I have to say. I think that, I mean, like Dr. Amber Batson said, it's okay to run, you know, and do a little spurt and stuff and have fun because dogs love mm. doing that. But, you know, try to coach that sort of increased activity with a calm activity in the beginning yeah. and, and afterwards. Um, you know, but people that run with their dogs or cycle with their dogs or wear mm. them out on the weekend and then they take days to recover. It's just really sad when you see it and you can't like fix everything. So you just have to keep your mouth shut. But if we can educate like the slow dog movement to show the right thing and um, forest bathing. I mean, the other, the other sort of part of the population, I think that maybe dogs are, you know, really, really depressed and bored at home and don't get out enough. Mm. If people did have a positive positive experience slow walking or doing forest bathing then they would be less depressed you know <laughs> or if they got out gardening then it just would have that you know win-win closed feedback yeah. loop thing you know people people don't treat their dogs well because they don't treat themselves well either mm -hmm. well there is that. that's absolutely true you know so it's part of our job i think i'm um, working with dogs to help people with dogs mm -hmm. so that's why Forest bathing is so amazing because it's free. It's free. It's, you know, um, I mean, at University of Exeter was studying uh, how trees affect people, and they their study uh, uh, surmised that people who live um, where there are trees and green spaces are less anxious and depressed. So, you know, I could just talk about it all day long, but I'm gonna I'm gonna read. Um, just so you know, there's seven minutes. We've got seven minutes left. Oh my god, okay. So you've done really well. You thought you oh wouldn't be god. able to talk for long. <laughs> well, people that know me as a friend would think oh, she's never going to shut up, but I, you know, it's a learning curve for me doing this. So thank you, Penny. Um, so the direct health benefits, of course, boost the immune system, increases energy. I'm going to just read now because I've only got seven minutes now. Decreases anxiety, depression, and anger, reduces stress, brings about a state of relaxation. It lowers um, stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline like dogs um, as well, suppresses the sympathetic or flight or fight system, enhances the parasympathetic or rest and recover system. It improves our cardiovascular and metabolic health, lowers blood sugar levels, improved concentration and memory, uh, improved pain thresholds, anti-cancer protein production is increased, helps you lose weight, helps you sleep better, and lowers blood pressure and increases, increases heart rate variability. Now on to the dogs. Um, <laughs> so I did talk about how our health, um, our emotional uh, well-being, dogs mirror that. So if we look after ourselves, it's good for our dogs. Yeah. And they literally yeah. absorb it from our hair, um, the cortisol. And um, the length of how you should walk with your dog for forest bathing is really up to you. I mean, if it, two hours is too long, that, that may be way too long for most dogs. It's a really slow walk. So it's, and sitting and everything is included in that. So but just sort of watch your dog and make sure you do what's right for your dog. Um, so for your dog, um, I talked about the low impact um, forest or woodland floor, um, the silence. Mm. So not talk as much as you normally would or not at all, that would be really calming for your dog. Um, it reduces fear in some dogs because, and rescue dogs are um, part of this, who are nervous around people. Yeah. Uh, it gives them some time out from social fear. It's very bonding for dogs and, and humans, the positive ions, um, because our indoor space, um, and Marina's talked about this, is quite polluted, you know, with not just people, most people don't use air fresheners and stuff like that, but just, you know, dead air. Yeah. Um, it's grounding because uh, they're walking on the earth, so the soil microbes are good for them as well. Um, stress um, relief and relaxation from deep sniffing. Uh, the low impact parkour so really um, strengthens um, their joints and muscles and everything when they're able to sort of dig a hole or walk um, 
onto a fallen log or a stump, um, walking over fallen sticks, um, paddling in the water. The sunlight provides vitamin D, builds them confidence by exploring a natural environment at a good pace, like a nice slow pace with you. Um, and so basically the best, the sort of perfect forest bathing scenario would be a place with gentle slopes, wide paths, well-maintained, well-marked trails, well, that might not happen, free from pollutants um, and traffic noise, uh, a stream or a waterfall that's very aesthetic in the Japanese um, lexicon, but also it's just, is lovely. Uh, a wide variety of plants, um, not too dark, so some light can come in, at least five kilometers in length. I have to piece like three woodlands in my neighborhood together to sort of get that length. Uh, plenty of trees, if possible, evergreens. Um, it's nice to have a guide and you can look that up. I, I'll have links on my blog um, to see if you want to talk to a forest guide when lockdown's over and have a nice walk. Um, and he put toilet facilities, which right now is non-existence behind a tree. So uh, just do your best with the wish list. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just doing it um, that's important um, and following your intuition. So it's just basically letting the natural world envelop you and your dog uh, in a way that you might not do. So important is long leash. Uh, I, at least five meters, um, the woman that wrote the forest bathing with her dog uh, book uses a 20 meter nylon line. Oh. Sorry, 20 foot. Um, Still quite a long way. Yeah. That is on, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think that if you have amazing recall with your dog, you could mm. do off leash. Mm. Um, and at the same time, it's important to make sure that's not pulling your attention away, worrying your dog's going to yeah. go off, your dog's going to chase a rabbit, that kind of yeah. thing. So, you know, it's your choice. Um, but you could use your body language, you know, really good body language, um, confident, you know, that you're pointing in one direction. If you want your dog to go in that direction at some point, it is good to give your dog choice, as we always talk about, um, and let the dog sense where you're putting your attention. So you're really in tune with each other, really. It's a cooperative um, experience and mutual, mutually beneficial experience. Um, wear the right clothes in this country, that's layers, layers, layers. Um, bring something to sit on, a snack, appropriate chew for, chew for your dog. Because if they do, when you sit down, if they choose to sit, um, lie down right beside you, then give them a chew as a nice reward and you can sit there yeah. for a while just um, experience. You could bring your phone, but I would leave it off, you know, charged but mm -hmm. off. It's not a time really to be taking photos. It's do you really want to um, just do a very quick summing up because we've got about a minute left. Oh, okay. Um, basically, <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, no stress. No stress. Uh, it will just cut you off. If it cuts you off, you'll know you've run out of time. It's just going. So forest bathing with your dog. <laughs> Go at your natural <laughs> day. <laughs> In the forest use all your senses, uh, leave your phone at home. It's slower than the slow dog movement. It's a scientifically proven way to be healthy in mm. nature with your dog, mutually symbiotic. Uh, find a little sit spot in the forest or the woodland with your dog and relax. I'll have more on my blog that I'm posting tonight Good. or tomorrow morning. I'll post, I'll post it all the, the enhancing things now. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thank, Thank you me. very much, Laura. Kate, are you okay for me to put this on the um, page? Thank you. Okay. I'm going to stop it now.